Yeah, I mean, I, I, it's, hard, it, it's hard and it's complicated to understand people in real life and then in photographs even harder. But it, there does seem to be despair, fury, shame, unable to do anything for the child. And the child does seem hopeful. When I look at this, part of what I find very powerful is that I feel drawn, because again, because of the cropping and because of the swaddling of the grayish claws and the darkness inside, I go immediately to the parent's eyes. And then the parent's eyes take me over the little kid's head. And then I look at the kid's eyes looking hopefully, and it starts to feel like it's um, a narrative or a story, and there's lots of movement and energy in it that's, that's incredibly sad. So in that way, it's quite powerful as art, I think. Um, next, last slide. I mean, this too is, um, you, in back you said an earlier image looked like a monk's the scream, a very famous painting. I mean, this too, it is a sort of classic triangle, and it's a classic image, and it looks very artistic, but it's very, just speaking personally, it's hard not to avert my eyes, um, even though I feel drawn in by the composition. And here's a case where I do wonder whether artistry and what it's depicting are somehow in some kind of uncomfortable relationship with one another. Um, Tom mentioned that he came to speak, and when he came to speak, he was pretty harshly criticized for producing beautiful photographs that became cocktail books about uh, places where people are suffering quite terribly. And one of his responses was, um, screw you, I'm trying to get people to be sympathetic and empathetic. Maybe somebody will do something. Maybe somebody will donate money, and you're not doing anything. And that was a very, very harsh exchange. So there's a kind of um, ethical discomfort with a representation, a beautiful representation of terrible suffering. Um, now we're going to go to the Japanese material for the, yeah, I'm sorry. I'm it's, a, it, it's a great question and it, you know, thinking about it makes you think, makes you remember that there's this first world guy with his equipment in this situation. And I don't remember if he responded when he was at Berkeley, but they're not candid. I mean, he was in, he was in very dire um, places, but certainly they're, composed. And I mean, maybe posed is too strong a word, but he lingered for a long time over the people and framed them artistically and then later cropped them artistically. So it's somewhere between candid and posed. Any more comments about this? Down in the front row? No? Okay, now we're going to, we're done with the slides. I'm going to go to the Japanese material. And one thing I want to take away from this as well, which will be a, you'll see throughout the material I'm going to show you about Japan, um, culminating in this idea of a new humanism um, spoken of by Oe Kanzabro, a Japanese novelist in the 60s, is that um, the abject, the crippled, the ugly, uh, the scarred body, and I, I think you've talked about this in this class, um, becomes in the 1960s and earlier, but culminates in the 1960s in Japan as a foundation of what Oe Kanzabro called a new humanism and the foundation of um, anti-nuclear politics. You know, I think um, there's much less time than I thought, so I think so. Yeah. Okay. Okay, great. Well, well you'll see, you'll see um, the, fir the first clip is from a videotape produced by what's called the Peace Museum in Hiroshima. Um, you haven't talked about the A-bomb at all, right? Uh, the atomic bomb was dropped under the auspices of Harry Truman on Hiroshima, um, August 6, 1945, approximately, see now people start writing notes, right? See, we never do this in literature classes. Approximately 200,000 people, maybe a few, fewer, died instantaneously like that. Um, people's skin melted off. Um, there were um, people who were, children who were born later, uh, next, in years to come, in next generations with deformities. So the effects were longer lasting. The city was completely leveled in a flash. And when Japanese writers and people talk about it, what they find distinctive about it seems to be that it's just a flash. There's no build up at all. Uh, August 9th, another bomb was dropped on Nagasaki. 
Um, 120,000 odd people died. I don't mean odd people. I mean about 120,000 people died. Um, to put this number in, in, I'm sure some odd people died too. To put this number in perspective, um, one night in Tokyo uh, during a um, bombing raid, um, 80,000 people died. So the significance Hiroshima has in the imagination of the Japanese and perhaps the world, world is not just tied to the numbers. It's tied to the instantaneousness of it. It's tied to it being the first nuclear bomb. And it's tied to this feeling that this could be the, the signal of the possible annihilation of the world. So this first, this first clip is um, from a, a videotape um, produced by the Peace Museum in Hiroshima. And it has to do with photography, and photography as testimony, and the way in which the Japanese, anyway, talk about destruction on their bodies as representing uh, their response. Okay. It's about six minutes long. ま、皆さん、はい、この今の写真はどの辺になりますか。ちょうどその後ですね。この、この辺ですよ。どの辺ですか。この、前線の上のここ、これ、前線の上のちょっとこう、これ、焼け棒ベテロンで、カッパで、
あの皮膚をぶら下げてこうやりましてねこっから皆皮膚がぶら下がってるんですね私あの着物がぶら下がってるんか思いましたけど皮膚でした神は育ちになりましてねあの自分の子供さんだは思うんですけどもうちょっと黒子のような感じ私は受けましたけどもう物も言わないんですけどね抱いて私たちの目の前でぐるぐる叫んであの揺り起こすようにして「起きてちょうだい」って泣き叫んでおられました揺り起こしておられるような様子でしたけどねもう全然物言いませんでしたねその赤ちゃんは。When one mother saw this photograph, is that too loud? No. Yeah. Why do you think she was walking with her back to the camera? Any guess? Yeah. I mean, you never find out in the film, but my guess, given the context, is that her face was burned and she didn't want it to be shown. Any responses to what you saw here? You saw here a different. Um, Fingernails and skin that were, and this is what something we're thinking about. The museum decided to、um, preserve pieces of fingernails and skin. Later in the movie, the director himself shows how his nails grew out black and very long, and he has the camera observe them. Late for school. Oh, stop, stop. Sorry.、Um, so you have photo- photography used as evidence, and you have people trying to. Find lost loved ones through photographic evidence. And here you have photographs that are spontaneous and presumably not artistically formed. And in some ways, they're much more powerful than the Salgado. Any comments about those images or questions? Yeah. I think that's probably true. That there's, there's personal shame and then there's social shame and stigmatization for people who were scarred by the bombs. And this stigmatization, I'm glad you brought up that word, is what later Owe k a n z a v o talks about as something that should be a source of pride and the beginning of politics. Now, the next, the next clip is from something called Barefoot Gen,、um, which was a comic book series started in 1945. It lasted until 73, and then it was made into a number of films, animated films. That have a pretty worldwide viewership. Has anyone heard of it or seen it? No? You've seen it? So, what's curious to me is your response to, to something that's, I shouldn't say this, not real, it's animated.、Um, let's look at it. It's about five minutes. Because we're going down to the river, right? Right! Where are they coming from? I've never seen so many. I wonder why. 